Hi, I'm Matt Wiltshire, Chartered Financial Planner and Advisory Propositions Consultant at CashCalc. Today we're going to be looking at the new gross cash flow and its new input sections. Much the same as the net basis, you have the ability to create a new forecast using information gathered via the digital onboarding system within CashCalc, pulling through any entries the client may have made on their digital fact find or within their integrations from your back office system. We would encourage you to get hands on, however, and enter that data to see how the new system works. The first thing you'll notice is the fresh look the modeler has taken on. Note the change in styling and the presence of five tabs on the left hand side of your page, which expand into further tabs when selected. This has been designed to make the process of creating cash flow plans even more straightforward. We now have a slightly revised assumptions page. As you'll see, we have a traditional forecast end age. However, we now have three individual inputs for inflation and inflationary increases. We have CPI, RPI, and average earnings increases. These bits of information will be used for the triple lock and for you to select during your cash flow. Now cash calculus is accounting for tax. We need to establish whose income each entry is. So you'll see that we now have an entry for two individuals, husband and wife in this instance. The country of residence, where we've accounted for England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And in addition to this, we now have some additional requirements, which include accounting for lifetime allowance and how much has been used up until this point. And we also ask in relation to the money purchase annual allowance and whether this has been triggered. These will ultimately feed the calculations within the gross cash flow engine. We also continue to include the events and timeline where you can drag and move important events during someone's cash flow planning. We also include the ability to toggle on or off the married or in a civil partnership button, which allows you to utilize the marriage allowance within the tax calculations. Moving on to the savings and investments tab, we now have a new drop down within this section for what category of savings plan this is. This will obviously account for different types of tax depending on which one is selected. In addition, we have a slight amendment to the way in which this page is laid out, whereby the variable templates now appear without having to click a show button. You will notice that within the new gross cash flow, we have a new set pot liquidation order button. Simply click this and drag and drop the pots into an order that you wish for them to be accessed within the cash flow. In addition to a new savings and investments page, we now have a dedicated pensions page into which you can add DC pensions and state pensions. When adding a DC pension, obviously we have the ability to select the owner, but we now have a new tick box, which allows you to articulate how much of the pot is already crystallized or uncrystallized. By unticking the pension is fully uncrystallized box, we have the ability to enter the uncrystallized pot value. This will go to establish the level of pension commencement lump sum still available within the pot and how much of the lifetime allowance has been used. As per the previous savings screen, we now have the variable growth templates able to be seen on this page. One of the most significant changes to the gross cash flow is the improvements made to the incomes page. Both incomes and expenditures have been split into two sections in order to add the income details required. When adding an income, we now establish whether this is an employment or an other income, who it belongs to, we still have the ability to call it whatever you'd like and have the ability to now select from an employed income, a self-employed income or a company director. For an employed person, we have the ability to add bonuses and benefits in kind as well as the gross salary. For self-employed, we have the ability to add in gross profits and how much per year. And for a company director, we have the ability to add the basic gross salary and gross dividends. When selecting other income, we now have the ability to suggest whether it is taxable or non-taxable. And if it is taxable, whether it is taxed under the earned income or the dividend income regime. And as previously, we have the ability to select when an income starts, also using the timeline in order to do this. And same applies when it ends, also being able to pin this to the timeline. Moving on to the expenses section, we've significantly improved and enhanced this section. As you will see, we now have the ability to distinguish between essential 
lifestyle and discretionary spending. And these in turn will be displayed differently on each cash, cash flow graph. The expenses are also broken down into easy to see color coded entries. Within the new withdrawals tab, we have the ability to not only add a standard withdrawal, however, we have the ability now to quick add a number of key pension withdrawal options. The new quick add functions will allow you to take income from the pension in three ways, either by pension commencement lump sum, a UFPLS withdrawal, or a flexi access drawdown, each with their own individual tax benefits, and you will be able to articulate it between each one in the cash flow. When creating a withdrawal, you'll have the ability to select which type of withdrawal this is, with a helpful indicator to remind you that there needs to be uncrystallized funds remaining in the pension. Moving on to the cash flow model output screens, we now have a revised and fresh looking cash flow graph. We now have a new pop up that shows an individual breakdown of each year and the incomes after tax. In addition, you'll note the three expenditure lines that we now have our essential expenditure line our essential plus lifestyle and our total expenses line. Each individual item can be added or removed from this new graph with the ability to hide all, having the ability to add in each individual item to this graph in order which you choose. You have the ability to show the essential expenditure and meeting that essential expenditure over time. And simply building up your cash flow picture. In addition, the savings over time, again looking very similar but with a revised new pop up for each. We now have the additional screen which shows the year on year tax, Nash insurance, and any dividend tax that would be payable. Again, being able to individually hide and bring these in over time. As we continue to develop the gross cash flow, our stress testing section will continue to improve. Upon launch, we have the simulate market event, which is as per your usual market event simulations. You have the ability to select and run a simulation against an individual or multiple pots and apply those market simulations. Both the Monte Carlo and meter goal functions will be coming soon. The largest and most significant changes to the gross cash flow come by way of the yearly breakdown with a totally redesigned and informative layout that now includes not only a money in screen showing the full breakdown of the taxable implications of the gross income. In addition, the breakdown of our expenditure by way of essential lifestyle and discretionary payments and a totally new screen showing the value of our pots, the amount of net incomes and net outgoings from those pots and any charges that would be applicable to them, including the real rates of return and the growth rates, but importantly also showing the crystallized or uncrystallized values of each pot. We also now have a lifetime allowance summary articulating how much of the lifetime allowance has been used based on this cash flow scenario. We've also introduced the new insights tab within the yearly breakdown, which will hold such information as how much of your personal allowance has been tapered, whether you've triggered the money purchase annual allowance, the amount of lifetime allowance that you may have used, or a lifetime allowance test that may have occurred, in addition to any capital gain events that may occur during that year. As per the net cash flow, you have the ability to create a fully branded Word or PDF report, including all of the outputs from your cash flow model.